An away team is taking a poke around a quarry in the hopes of finding some rocks for their engines, when they come across a drawing in the soil. It doesn't mean anything to Neelix, but it triggers a flashback from Chakotay, so I guess this is going to be his backstory episode. Because of this, I'm going to say two things before we get into it. Number one, the Native American advisor to the show was an asshole called Jackie Marks, who claimed Native American heritage despite having none, and anything in Voyager even remotely touching on indigenous peoples should be viewed through that lens. Number two, I'm both white and English, and as such, even if I had sufficient knowledge on the topic to provide an informed assessment, which I don't, it's not something that I'd be willing to do anyway when the voices of those directly affected have far more right to comment than I. If you want to know more on the background, I'd encourage you to read the article Fool's Gold by Alex Jacobs, who was himself Native American, which deals with Jackie Marks and his fraudulent Jamake Highwater persona. I've included the link to this article in the description of the video. With that out of the way, let's continue. The flashback begins with the teenage Chicote having a bit of a walk with some others, one of whom we presume is his dad. Chicoteen spots a symbol carved into a log that looks not unlike the one Chicote saw, and this causes his dad to both compliment his eyes and explain that it was carved by the tribe they're going to visit, and with whom they share common ancestors. He tells Chicoteen and us that the people they're going to visit still live by ancient traditions, and we see Chicoteen being dismissive of their ways. Back in the present, Chicote uses the knowledge we just learned in the flashback to suggest the markings are a blessing to the land. Up in sick bay, Ensign Pregnant is busy being pregnant. The doc is dismissive of her discomfort at the process, and after she leaves, Kez calls him out on being a twat, saying he's never been sick or in pain, and that this lack of reference point means he can't understand the feelings of vulnerability that come with having a biological form. This would be an interesting point to make, were it not for the fact that it isn't true, because the doc felt pain in Season 2, Episode 3, Projections. Regardless, this is probably a plot point for the episode, so I guess we'll let it go and see where it leads. Elsewhere, Chicote is telling Janeway about the flashback we all saw earlier, then we take a look at a comparison between the symbol from his youth and the symbol on the planet they just visited. When asked for an explanation, Chicote recounts the myth of the sky spirits from above, who were said to have created the first of his ancestors, then buggered off to a sacred land, and honestly, it's not the worst excuse we've heard this season for something from Earth being in the Delta Quadrant. Anyway, they also spotted a warp signature in orbit, so they decide to follow that to both find out more about the planet and maybe ask about some of those special rocks for the engines. We arrive at the planet the warp trail leads us to, but Scan suggests there are no life signs. There are some weird electrical readings, though. Oh, and we found some of the special engine rocks, too, so that's nice. Guess we're going to take a look. Or not. Every time they try to find a place to teleport, a storm starts at the exact location. Personally, if a whole planet was telling me to fuck off, I'd probably listen, but I guess Starfleet are made of sterner stuff because we're going in a shuttle. On the way, flying through a storm starts another Chicote flashback. Chicoteen is being a dismissive ass about his father's beliefs some more. During a little heart-to-heart, -heart, we learned that their relationship was strained, with Chicoteen unwilling, or unable, to see the world through his father's eyes, even though he believed this would make him a disappointment. This familial strain is the first real chance we've had to connect with the character rather than the stereotype, and I suspect it's because of this that I've not warmed to him before. The flashback ends and we continue our descent in the shuttle, but not before Chicote sees a face in the clouds. Back on the ship, Kez is with the Doctor. Who sneezes? It seems the Doc has been tampering with his program to give himself the flu in order to better understand his patients. Except he's now seeing it as a chance to prove he's better because he won't let it affect him. The away team are having a poke around, and while doing so, Chicote discovers a flower that he last saw back on Earth when he was in the rainforest with his dad. Then he sees a bird that he last saw back on Earth when he was... well, you get the idea. Cut to a flashback of Chicoteen telling his dad that he's going to leave their tribe and join Starfleet. There's some more debate about old versus new, with his dad saying he'll never belong to either if he leaves, which feels like the worst thing you could say under the circumstances to me, but I'm not a parent and we switch back to the present to find Neelix being attacked by the bird. It swoops in again for another go, and Chicote sees that face again while the bird strafes him. Then it buggers off, and we send Neelix to sickbay. No time for them to care about that, though, because we found a structure of some kind. In sickbay, the doc is treating Neelix while suffering from his flu. It's getting to him, but he won't let it show, because he's got a point to prove for reasons of toxic holomasculinity. 
Down on the planet, we're ready to start grabbing some of the engine rocks, but we really should get permission from the locals first. They're proving elusive, so Chicote thinks disarming will prove that we're not hostile. Tuvok suggests that this is a shit idea, and given that one of them got fucked up by a sparrow, I'm kind of in his corner on this one, but we lay down the guns anyway. Cut to a shot of Chicotine and his friends doing the same in the past. They're greeted by some, uh, definitely humans. Yep, totes humans, honest. Chicote of the present tries running through the same plan to see what happens, and a storm kicks up, so they scarper. I, I guess, are we just, we're, we're just leaving the guns then, are we? Okay, okay, we'll just leave the guns. They get separated, and Chicote briefly glimpses someone with suspiciously familiar brow ridges, not unlike those people Chicotine met that were totally human, honest. Then a tree falls on him. Tuvok and Balana have had enough of this shit, though, so they teleport out. I guess this storm must be different to the one that prevented them teleporting in earlier. Chicote dropped his badge when that tree twatted him, though, so it goes without him, and I find it curious that there's no system in place to check if it's attached to a person before teleporting, but I guess that subroutine was written by the guy in charge of holodeck safety. Whilst Chicote has a nice relaxing tree nap, the ghosty face lad has a little look. Back on Voyager, we're trying to find Chicote without any joy. Oh, and that ghosty face lad might have nicked the shuttle too, because it's not where they parked it. We're going to go back down, but not before the doc calls and says he needs help. The flu he gave himself should have stopped by now, but hasn't, and he's panicking. In the midst of his melodramatic death throes, Kez mentions that she added a couple of hours to the flu, so he understands the effect that uncertainty can have on matters of health. Her point thoroughly proven, she reports to the away team. It's a lovely little scene proving that Kez is willing to say when someone is wrong, regardless of her fondness towards that person. If you take anything away from this episode, make it the moral that friends shouldn't let friends get away with being an asshole. Down on the planet, Chakotay's waking up from his tree nap. After discovering he has no comm badge and no shuttle, he decides he might as well go for a stroll. When he gets back to the settlement, it's time for another flashback. Chakotine and friends are being welcomed by the definitely humans. It seems this welcome involves giving them the same clothes, an activity with which Chakotine takes issue. We're touching on the sense of belonging, something many of us struggle with at the best of times, let alone when we're 15. Seeing his father be accepted by the definitely humans seems to crystallise that feeling of otherness in Chakotin. Current day Chakotay seems to have overcome this shyness, though, as he just straight up gets nude. He tells the hiding natives that they have nothing to fear from him, which might be more convincing if it wasn't coming from a stranger with his cock out. He finds some cloth on a piece of furniture, which may be a robe or maybe what the aliens wipe their arse on, but he's going to wear it anyway. Just as well as the away team were trying to get down there, and he'd probably have some questions to answer if he was stark bollock naked. They can't seem to teleport down, though, due to the storm. Janeway asks why they were able to teleport up earlier, receiving my personal thanks for doing so, and Tuvok suggests this pattern might mean the atmospheric conditions on the planet are being controlled by a sentient entity. In the face of this data, Janeway decides to land Voyager itself, which... Well, it's certainly an interesting choice, isn't it? The planet seems to agree with me and starts a monsoon. On the planet, Chakotay's proceeding with roughly the same level of self-preservation by walking directly towards a cave with some lightning in front of it. He's able to walk through it because reasons, and enters the cave. Voyage is faring a little worse, what with being pulled into a cyclone and all, but frankly, what the fuck did they expect? They've got about ten minutes till they crash, but nobody's panicking yet, probably because they've realised there's only seven minutes left of the episode. Inside the cave, some guys with guns turn up and say the same words as the tribe that Chakotin met in the rainforest. It's fine, though, because they have a handshake translator, and, using it, they're able to have a chat. Alien Guy says that his race went to Earth a goodly 40,000 years ago for a lark, and spat some of their genes into a part of the primitive race they found. Those people were Chakotay's ancestors, referred to as the Inheritors. They spread across the land, but were ultimately all but destroyed by normal humans. There's some back and forth about how the aliens assumed humans were still arseholes, which is fair, then they come to an understanding. Which is handy, as Voyager was about to crash. The cyclone buggers off and they're fine, much to the confusion of all aboard. Tuvok explains that it's probably because the aliens don't see them as a threat anymore, as when the cyclone stopped, they also stopped blocking Voyager's scans. As an away team turns up, Chakotay's finishing his chat with Alien Guy. He says they can have some of those special rocks, and they talk about Chakotay's dad. Chakotay explains that he adopted his father's ways after he died, as a tribute of sorts. Then they have a little cuddle and look at a bird while he talks to his dead dad before he leaves. End of episode.